welcome to the NBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Tonzo. Joining me today is James. Ah, oh, good grief, Norman. And also joining us today is Silver. Hi, I'm reviewing here. Yay, how are you all doing? Uh, so, I, I don't know what happened. Somehow I'm in the hosting seat right now. I'm driving. Let's see how you do now. <laughs> I just got my license recently, so let's let's see how much of a train wreck I can do. No, Norman, it doesn't count if you get your license in Luxembourg. Okay, you you need to get it on a country that actually is in your area. Hey, the internet is in my area. But anyway, so this week, like my James mentioned last week. <sighs> I still can't get the phrase. Anyway, uh, we're going to be reviewing Made in Manhattan Season 5, episode number 16, overall episode number 107, original air date on September 26, 2015, written by Noel Bennett, ben, 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 Benvenit, Benvenit, Benvenuti. Ben Benuti. Yeah, Ben, Ben, ben I can say it. And yeah, this is another person. We are never going to have Noel Benvenuti on the show because you just butchered her name. Hey, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. And story, but oh God, James, want to help me out? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> dude, just go for, just go with. Do you want me to do this plot nah, synopsis? No, no, mind, no, Jocelyn, something. Um, <laughs> Jocelyn Thiessen and Mike Meyer. Jocelyn Thiessen, isn't that Jason Thiessen's wife? I, it might be. Yeah, yeah that's cool. If it is, it's cool. Uh, slow synopsis. Um, James, why don't you take it? Because you're so good with that one. <laughs> In this episode, we have Rarity and Applejack being summoned by the map of, the, the cutie map to a, par- a particular place in Manhattan to solve a friendship problem. And lo and behold, the one that they find needs help for the friendship problem is a fan favorite and returning from season four, Coco Pomel. We got Coco back and everybody loves the Coco. The Coco is so cute. I know. I Cutie know. Pomel. Yes. The, the, the fandom darling. Mm-hmm. I, I have to talk about Coco, but that's later on in the episode. We should do first impressions, first yep, of all. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yes. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm going for the reverse alphabetical order with Silver first, but I'm going to change it around because I'm hosting, huh? so I go last. <laughs> so, Silver, you first, man. You? So impressions. Well, I will check be all like, y'all, and Rarity be like, oh, divide. And at, and Manhattan, I'd be like, oi! Yes, those are my impressions. They're <laughs> flawless. You know, it's funny. This came at the end of Rarity Month. So everyone was saying, oh, Rarity in this episode, more Rarity. She got sh- shortchanged in season three, so I can't blame her for three uh, big roles in uh, three in a row. But I actually think Applejack is the standout pony for this episode. It's Applejack who faces the greatest uncertainty. Applejack who... Uh, is the most out of her element. And I, I do want to talk about because there is one major criticism that I noted, uh, that came up a lot for this episode. But, and ultimately it's Applejack, just as Pinky really had the idea to solve the Griffinstone issue, here's main, ha- Applejack realizing what's needed to solve the problems in Manhattan. In fact, in some ways, Rarity and Applejack had an even more difficult challenge than, than, uh, Pinky and Rainbow. I mean, with the, uh, with Griffinstone, you knew what was wrong just by looking at it. Here, they had, the, these two had to dig a lot deeper and required a little bit of deus ex to, uh, even find the problem. And what about you, James? Out of the Rally Trilogy, definitely this is better than Cantor Boutique in the way that it's set up and presented. Uh, of course, having Coco Pomel back is a joy. Rarity is on top form as always. And it is, a, be- a lot of fun and pretty, pretty neat to see Applejack in the spotlight. Just yes, being, being a, n- a normal walking pony that she is. And I know that sounds kind of mean, but no, she's a very, very run of the mill working, working ho- workhorse. And she's thrilling on that. She's thriving on that uh, persona. Like that's something that not many people take for granted is that Applejack is the reliable one. You can count on her for everything. The, the people don't appreciate that. This episode showcases that very much. Like, from the moment that she starts preparing everything, and uh, we should talk about what happens to her poor hat. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But, but, yeah, it's, that's, that's, it's definitely one of the best, uh, showcases of the character that we have had in a, in a while. So yeah, 
to me, this episode is pretty, pretty great, but it's not as good as Rarity Investigates. Uh, it's, it's almost scraping, uh, Rarity Investigates, uh, for the top spot of the Rarity trilogy. So it's right in the middle. But, oh, it could be a bit better and it will be right on top. Alright, alright. And as for me, I like this episode. This episode was fun to watch. But here's the problem with this one is that it's a key episode. It's one of those plot point episodes where something needs to happen. Like, this is a cutie maps episode. Both Rarity and Applejack are being summoned to the problem and they need to solve it. As a map episode, it's rather interesting. We don't know what's the initial problem. It's a big town. Like they say, there's probably tripled the amount of people or ponies in Manhattan than Ponyville. So it's a big town. There's big problems. And this is trying to find a needle in a haystack kind of situation. But I do love the whole story, Coco Pomel, the way that it's being told, and Applejack and Rarity's interaction are just awesome. I'm just rambling, and well, why not we just go into it? We're going to spoil the episode now. If you haven't watched it, pin it here, continue later, and well, let's start. So we start in the library. To be more specific, it's Twilight's library. We get to see Twilight reading books, and she's bored. (laughs) Uh, We've truly reached the end times when Twilight is bored with books. Yeah, I mean, like... (laughs) Spikey, what says this? But you're reading books! And her rebuttal is, I've read all of this already. So she's read every book that Celestia sent her, which I assume is uh, includes books borrowed from the, the library of the two sisters. And we see that the map is calling them. Well, the map's just sending a message to Twilight and saying that, hey, hey, Applejack and Rarity needs to be here. They're being summoned by the map. Can and we Twilight's talk for a moment? Not invited. Can we can we talk for a moment about how adorable Twilight is during those? I am bored. <laughs> I'm bored. And Spike is an absolute nerd. No. He has his comics in in uh, acid free bags. <laughs> like, oh, oh wow, well, knowing what we know, like, oh yeah, you sure have your books in an acid free bag. You you keep them all tidy, but with Shining Armor's book, you just burn them up. <laughs> well, now in the, in future episodes, but yes, uh, right and Applejack they get salmon, but Twilight doesn't. Oh yeah, uh, the faces that the ponies make in this episode. Oh wow, just so cute. So we go to the whole song and dance where the map is calling Applejack and Rarity to this specific part of Manhattan, and Twilight can't follow because she doesn't want to spoil the master plan, and. They get ready and shipped out. They ride by train and arrive in Manhattan the next day, I presume, or the same day. The table has spoken. Mm, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> the GPS has to, is telling us where to go. It's a, it's a, it's a very uh, metaphysical okay. GPS. It tells you where to go to find your purpose in life. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. But as the ponies arrive in Manhattan, we get to see a lot more of it. Like, we get to see the building, the bridge, the tower... This is more than what we already seen before, which is cool. World building as people want. And we get to see that Rarity has her own brand logo. Cool. And she also harkens back with little, what you do to me? <laughs> yes. Oh, Manhattan, what you do to me indeed. And this is where we get to see how the ponies are. The ponies are of Manhattan are a fast-paced bunch. They need to walk fast. They need to act fast. They just go fast. Gotta go fast. It's main- it's Manhattan. It's based on Manhattan. I do remember the review that you did, Silver, of uh, Rarity Takes Manhattan a couple of years ago. Well, I can't believe that I was, that's actually been a couple of years ago. Um, It's been one year. It's, been, it's Really? I think it's been like two. Heavens. Oh, my God. The world moves so fast and so slow at the same time. Yes, uh, indeed. Yeah, but... The, the way that we see Manhattan in this episode compared to the way we were seeing Manhattan in previous episodes, A for improvement. That's actually a lot different from what I, what I remembered. Mm, true, true. But you also have to remember that this is a different part of Manhattan. But here's the, we come to the point where the big criticism comes in. Applejack is so 
timid and unsure of herself in this big uh, city. And she even said, you know, I, I, why is the map sending me here? And people say, but you've been here before. That's, wow. Well, when she was a Philly. She's been there when she was a Philly. She was there with her friends. That's actually what I want to say. Applejack has been there to see family, to see, uh, to be there with her friends. She's known what the goal is, what her situation, what her role is. Mm -hmm. The map is throwing her into the deep end of uncertainty with no guidelines. True that. Like, if you think about it, when she was a Philly, things change a lot within a short amount of time. Buildings go up, buildings go down. So her experience from when she was a Philly to now, throw them away. They're not going to be the same. And when she was with her friends, well, if she's uncertain, her friends will help her along. So she can, well, she doesn't have to carry the whole grunt of it. Now, in a situation like this, she is carrying the full responsibility. Plus, she needs to help a lot of, you know, she needs to help the friendship problem here. And she doesn't know what it is. Even we don't know what it is until what Deus Ex Machina happened. And Rarity, being her fashionista self, points at everything that she thinks is a problem and helps the first problem she sees, which is a pony buying a terrible looking hat. None of them works. Of course none of them works, right? You're not being very practical. What happened to you? But she does give rise to the greatest pop culture reference of all. What is oh, it? yes. What is it? Charlie Brown. Yeah. Completely Charlie Brown pony. Yeah, and it completely flew over my head when I first watched this. Well, un unlike the Sherlock's, I actually got that reference. Charlie Brown pony. Where is it? Like The scene where Rarity has opened a friendship advice booth. Ah, and yeah, that one. Given shippers something to focus on. Yeah, because I'm still at the part where Rarity is helping the person pony with the hat. And I'm trying to make a business here. Yeah. I also need to, fe to realize that his cutie mark is... <laughs> A, 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 a football. What? No. I talk, okay, different scenario then. Uh, no, I, no, I, I'm talking about Charlie Brown's cutie mark. It's a football. Are you seeing that? Uh, oh, yes. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor, poor. Mm. <laughs> wow. Now I'm looking at it. He's a clown, that Charlie Brown. I'm thinking that, that stand that Rarity has, I'm thinking that it's a kissing booth. What? Yeah, that's... uh. Well, yeah, Norman, that's your problem. That's what your mind is telling you. you, you, you look see, at, the, look yeah. at the top there, like, oh God. But anyway, um, with them not knowing what to do, because, I'll be honest, guys, like, if you're put into a situation where your job is to help someone or help a friendship problem, do you know what to do? Nope, you just, you gotta go in and wing it. And wing produce win, and win produce, well, let's just say a DSX machina. And it hits Rarity's face in the form of a paper, telling that, hey, um, they're doing a event, a play of sorts. And it's run by Coco Pomel. Yay! And we get to see Coco. Yay! And so, and the fandom does squee. Yes. All of the, all, all of the Bronies say, ah, my waifu, my waifu. She's back, she's back. Let's, let's talk about Coco Pomel for a moment. Um, when when she came out in when she appeared for the first time in Rarity Takes Manhattan, the that was all the way back in season four, the early 2014. Actually, first episode we saw in 2014. Uh, she uh, caused a bit of a ruckus. Oh, uh, for the best and for the for the best and for the worst, because uh, for the best, a lot of people had for the first time introduced to a character that had a, a story arc that was outside of the one from the main six who had a satisfying conclusion and who was absolutely likable besides the the story that she had, you know, being basically bullied into submission by by her boss, Suri Polymer, and her finally leaving Suri to fulfill her dreams. That was great. And that was something that this show hasn't done hasn't done all that often if at all. So of course she did cause a big a big impact. But on the negative side, and that's the negative side for how people reacted. People were accusing Coco Pomel of being a recall or of Fluttershy, because her attitude, her at her, her uh, behavior and all that, they were like, oh, it's just a Fluttershy recall or... I don't... I didn't see it. I didn't see it either, and those people are wrong, because Coco has nothing to do with Fluttershy. They are completely different characters. 
Anybody who says that they are similar, they better shut up. <laughs> oh, wow, getting aggressive here. I really like Coco Pomel. I think it's one of the best characters this show has to offer. I don't like her more than I like Rarity, but I think she is a brilliant, brilliant character and a fantastic addition to the to the cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what do you guys think? Well, I enjoy her. She is adorable and and gentle. Uh, I think there is a a very strong criticism that in this episode in particular, she's sort of oh everything's going so wrong and I'm so delicate and I'm so frail. She is sort of a damsel in distress. A little bit, yeah. But she was the start of the main six influencing others and the worldview expanding to include, hey, there are other ponies having their own troubles in this world. They're not just there to watch the main six save the day. And I've enjoyed this show's trend of giving the background characters a little more uh, development or identity. Now, granted, a lot of this was based on her her cuteness, her demure (laughs) attitude. And... So I can't say I, – I wasn't screaming, oh, my waifu when I saw her. But I was like, oh, she's back. That's cool. Mm. <laughs> and for me, I do like her design. She, she – how do I put this? She has a very matching color. Like everything works for her. She has that nice blue or turquoise color. I, mean, I don't know what the color is, but I just love it. And she just works well. And plus, she's a nerf pony who does dresses. So that's cool. So, getting back on track, the reason why she had that flyer in the first place was she wanted to ask for help for the, what you call this, play that she's trying to revive back? What was it called again? She's trying to bring back the theater that, uh, the, 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 the community theater that uh, they had on the neighborhood that was run by the one who inspired her to become a fashion designer. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And, Along the way, she explains everything that she was her inspiration for being all that. And the town, the community was knit tight. They were very tight. They were well knit. And everybody was friendly towards each other. And now things change. And since she retired, things change. Everybody's just rude and, well, like any normal town would be. And she's panicking. Like, oh no. A lot. Yeah. There's actually... She's not so cute when she has the panic face. <laughs> she's so stressed. She's so stressed. Ah, what to do? And Applejack and Rarity reassures her that, hey, we'll help you. This is what the map's calling us here for. We'll help you. Applejack's good at building. And yeah, she built the uh, barn three times. She had the music montage done of it too. And Rarity's good at fashion. I'll help you with the fashion. And it's a, it's a mighty challenge for Applejack. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the but musical. before that, but before mm-hmm. that, we have, they, they're, they're gonna help her with recruiting people, recruiting volunteers. And they went to the newsstand guy, the newsstand guy says no. They go to the popcorn <laughs> girl. The, the news, the newsstand guy is like, no, I can't help you. I am Christian Bale. <laughs> I have to go chew the sound guy right now. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Yeah, and the popcorn girl says no. And the corn artist, I think he's a corn artist. <laughs> I don't know what he does, but he says no too. But do you do you, do you realize that there is all that the the reference to the the news is? You yep. call that one? Yeah, that's actually Christian Bale from the news is. Oh really? You no. Know. Yes, yes, yes. I'm yeah. Totally, man. Absolutely. All right. And well, now here's the part where the well, Rarity and Applejack says we'll help you physically. And once Coco Pomel shows the location, Aya Kramba. Yeah. It needs more than... Talk about Ransack. needs more than a little TLC. Oh, what? Does they lost cause? Well, that is that... a TLC. Dude. Anyway, so with Applejack's great talent of fixing stuff, she decides to put on her musical montage and start working on the park. They should have brought Apple Bloom so she could get her cutie, Margo. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, no. She works on the place and there's a casualty, guys. Oh. A tragic <laughs> casualty. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Ah, it's okay. She can the get another hat. one. The it's hat. just a hat we assign too much meaning. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm going to leave this one for the end because I don't want... Like, it's just a hat, like you guys said. But uh, anyway, after what she's done so far, uh, it's not bad, but there's still a lot more to do. A lot, lot more to do. And... The actors arrive. 
Yes. And they're jerks. Well, they're professionals. Well, they're actors. Okay. No, they're pretentious is what they are. Yeah. They are actors. <laughs> In yeah. New York. Yeah. <laughs> do you, but do you need any other explanation? They are actors. Oh, they're prote- yes, they're actors. Yeah. Oh, they're so gay. They're actors. <laughs> yeah. You cannot fix it. They're actors. Mm, yeah, they play their part right. As they come, they say, oh, um, where's the dress rehearsal? Okay, let's just get ready. We we'll go up on stage. And with that, Applejack says the stage is not ready and it collapses. Yay. Yeah, that, it doesn't last much until it falls apart. Yay, and now the stage is no more. Coco Pomel is stressing out over this and she, she She's just super wants upset. To, super upset. She just wants this to ha- she just wants to be successful, like she wants to have a good name for her mentor. And Rarity falls down on Applejack. And yay, very cute scene. And then Applejack shows her best. Oh, this is, it's Earth Pony. Send an Earth Pony to fix a problem. Because Pinkie Pie figures out what to do in Griffinstone. Applejack figures out what to do in Manhattan. This means our, our final pairing, Twilight and Fluttershy, are at a significant dif- disadvantage <laughs> because there is no Earth Pony. Well, if you count Elicorn, she has all three elements. Yeah. Oh, please. No one ever stresses the Earth Pony elements of an Alicorn. No, <laughs> you, you, you already know how that episode is going to go. You know that it's going to be Fluttershy, the one fixing the problem, because Twilight is going to be like, oh my gosh, I've been summoned by the map. I cannot believe it. Senpai mm. noticed me. <laughs> uh, probably. But Applejack says, you know what? We still can salvage this. It's not going to be at full capacity, but we can salvage this. And her plan is to build a stage, just to build a stage. And Rarity can just help with the backgrounds and costume designs. And, well, they do it. They, like Shia LaBeouf says, do it! Yeah, but they did it in a very good way. I mean, this is, this is, uh, one of the most memorable parts in the episode mm-hmm. for me, at least. I love the car, I'm sorry, I love the cardboard, mm-hmm. uh, production design. It's so neat and so minimalistic and at the same time so childish. It's very naive. And I like that. It has, it, it is very naive. I love that. I do love the part where they just tape the character's cutie mark on their flanks. Like, yeah, it's there. Do it. And as they perform on stage, like, for free, technically there's nobody really watching. They just perform. And Street performers. Yeah. And people just continue on. Like they see, they sit down, and even a kid asking, like, Mom, what's that? And Mom responds, this, oh, it's just a play. Can we watch it? Okay, sure. I'm really streamlining things, but yeah, they go on and on. And as you see the whole play happening, you see people gathering around, sitting next to each other. And the thing that what Rarity and Applejack wanted to do from the very beginning is working. People are gathering around. People are being friendly to one another. People are, well, the popcorn ponies there. The I don't know what pony was there too. And basically everybody's there. Everybody who's everybody shows up. Mm-hmm. And as soon as the plays end, the actor invites Coco Pomel to be on stage to say that it was all her doing. And Coco Pomel, in turn, calls Applejack and Rarity to say that it was with their effort that it managed to happen. After that, everybody mingled, everybody became friendly, and the lesson here is... Silver, you want to take it? The lesson here is basically, as Applejack says... Well, there's twofold lesson. There's the encouragement to be involved in your community to say, to not diminish your contribution based on time. That even just a few minutes of contributing is better than zero. I'm more attracted to the, to the notion of do what you can with what you have and stop wishing you could make it more. Applejack solved this problem by just acknowledging we can't fix the old stage, but we can make something new. And so rather than giving up, she found, she focused on what was a possible rather than what was desired. Both are very strong morals. I'm, I gravitate more towards, uh, Applejack's lesson. Which is true, which is true. It's hard to put it in terms of which one's better. Like, we have, we have personal tastes. Like, the community part is a well worth effort. But doing, um, working with what you have is also a worthwhile effort. And I'm gonna say this, why not both? Take them both and keep it to heart because these are two very important lessons. Very. They didn't realize that everything was in such disrepair. 
so Apple Jack can say you you nearly get crushed by statues and falling <laughs> stages for a change. See how you like it, huh? Huh? <laughs> I huh? don't think that she put it that way, but in the end, what Apple Jack's saying is that you still can do a lot. The park is not fully repaired yet, so the community can work on that now. So that's your pet project. And with that, the two ponies get the message and they take the leave and Apple Jack and Rarity butt vibrate. Yeah, meaning they got a job well done. <laughs> you have to think on this, uh, on this uh, aspect for a minute. Is that if so far every episode that we have seen that uh, regards the map of harmony, mm-hmm. uh, the, 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 the 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 kitty map, it does. Uh, it, it's it's weird in that way because they don't fix the problem completely. They don't make a whole fixing up of the whole situation and let's move on to the next idea. No. They kickstart the uh the 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 events that are yeah. going to end up fixing the problem. I mean they kick started the thing with uh, uh the, 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 the the reparation of Griffonstone. Mm-hmm. They kick started the fixing of the park and uh the, the revival of the community here in Manhattan. It's not that they are fixing everything. They are just showing the people how to that's more than enough. That's actually very neat when you think about it. Well, it's true, but you also have to remember that this is the cutie maps. There is technically fixing friendships or something related to do with friendship. And the way I'm looking at it is that with the Griffin, okay, for first things first, with the Equalist Town, there are a community who is controlled by a, one dictator. That dictator's gone. And, well, they fixed that problem. Now they can live a normal pony life. With Griffinstone, that place was, let's just say it was, it could be better. And they fixed that problem too. They're just pushing them to the right way for them to move on or to carry on with their life in a better light. And with this one in Manhattan too, they're doing the same. So, yeah, what I'm seeing here is they're doing their job, but they're giving the townspeople a good start. I think you two are in agreement on this. Yes. Yeah. We like it. There you go. And with that, Rarity buys Applejack a new hat and that one face they're doing. Oh my god. Uh, very shippy. So, yeah. Mission's over. Yeah, right. No, it's always shippy for you. <laughs> hey, have you seen that Tumblr blog? That's awesome, man. What Tumblr blog are you talking about? Rarity Jack. So oh, the Radio J- Daily yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't, but yeah. uh, now that you say it, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, but anyway. I don't know. Apple- Applejack's grin at the end. That's a, that's a bit of nightmare fuel right uh, there. Are you talking about Applejack or Rarity? A- at Applejack, the very last shot of the episode. Oh, that one. Oh, wow. Her cheese is her thing. Uh, wow. Her, 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 her. And so, well, episode ends. And that was episode la- what do you guys think? Oh, it was a fun romp. It was uh, just good to see good characterization for both Applejack and Rarity. They're always my favorite odd couple. Uh, they have such cr- drastically different personalities, but they bring out the best in one another. I will say Manhattan, it's Manhattan, Manhattan, the New Yorker attitude, the busy, the busyness. I kept waiting for a, a taxi to come barreling through the street as they were all watching the play. <laughs> just like, yeah! Middle of the street. Get off the street. <laughs> oh, well. they did it right. There, there was one cabby. I guess that it was like uh, enough of a suburb or not a busy neighborhood that they didn't have to worry about cars but barreling down. But it was like, don't try this in actual New York. It's a death <laughs> trap. Oh, well. Oof. and looking at the park, that could be Central Park. Oh God, no. <sighs> James, what about you, man? Uh, like I said at the beginning of the episode, uh, at the beginning of the review, this is a good middle of the ground between Rarity Investigates and Canterlot Boutique. Not as fun and, and, and enjoyable as Rarity Investigates, but it has a much better presentation than Canterlot Boutique. It definitely opens itself to, uh, to more future episodes. I want to see more of, uh, more of Coco, of course. Never getting tired of her. Uh, yeah, overall I really enjoyed this one. One of the best. And as for me, I enjoyed this episode. This episode was, it has a nice lesson. It has a lot of good things going for it. The story that it tells was 
perfect. I, I just love the scene that Manhattan or yeah, Manhattan was awesome. We get to see more of that. We get to see Coco back again. That was cool. And I don't know. I mean, it's just nice and balanced to me. I feel like this is a good episode. There's nothing more I can say. We did neglect to mention that this ties into Brotherhood of Social as they talk about the Sisterhood of Social coming up. That is, uh, that is true. Yeah. We forgot to mention that. Yeah, true that, true that. We um, that was my bad. I, I'm hosting. I should have remembered that. But yes, uh, it's okay. We'll make up for it later. We will sacrifice you and uh, to the review gods. No. But, no. Yes. <laughs> oh God. Oh, if I knew. I don't make sacrifices to the review gods because I have one. So anyway, anyway, here's usually the part where I ask James what we're going to review next week. But since I'm in the driver's seat, I'm guessing I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, so Norman, what are we going to review next week? Ah, oh, next week. Well, next week we're going to review Very Hoof Social Season 5, Episode 17, overall episode number 108. And, well... This is going to be one heck of an episode because a lot of things. Yep. So many things. Yep. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been a Spanish person. I have been in New York. Get out of my way. You New Yorkers and your rudeness for road traffic. Uh, I'm going to go to Chicago with their deep dish pizza. They're great. Anyway... We'll see you guys next week with another awesome review episode. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Adios. Still don't get over that. Thank God.